I'm Erica Zavaleta, and I'm a professor of ecology and evolutionary biology at UC Santa Cruz. And um, we are in my backyard here in Santa Cruz on the Lower West Side. It's very windy because it's spring. And part of why I love my garden is that it just keeps me connected day to day, hour to hour when I'm working from home, which we have been doing so much for two years, um, to what's changing at all of these different time scales around us in the natural world. Oh my gosh, the chickens totally have names. My kids name the chickens, so they have ridiculous names. I think this is Kardashian, and uh, there's one called Death Eater. All right. This takes forever because half of it comes back out, but then they drink it out of the puddle. I find the world to be such a miracle, and I, you know, when I was in high school, I think I realized I love science, but in particular, I was just fascinated by life. And um, so biology was the natural direction. And it was later that I figured out that there actually was this field that was about not the pieces, but the connections. That's ecology. Um, it's also sort of about the connections between people and those natural systems. And so I'm a systems thinker, and I love sort of unpacking and understanding and then using that understanding to protect um, these systems that include us. I'm really excited about expanding work that we've been doing for a long time on the conservation of California oak woodlands. Um, California oaks are a bunch of species that don't occur anywhere else in the world. They just are here in California. And for a long time, we were focused on understanding how to restore and conserve them, you know, in response to things like clearing and livestock grazing, and it's shifted very much to focusing on how to help them weather climate change. Um, so there are a lot of tools like gene banking of drought tolerant genes and identifying refuges where they're going to be able to persist even as things get hotter and drier that are driving our research now um, and that feel really, really critical to keeping those iconic species on the landscape long term. places like California, we're actually getting to a new place where we're learning to exist in community with the natural world better in many ways. And so, you know, this is the moment to me when my work can help us get there as opposed to ending up in a place in the next century where, you know, there's a lot of regret about things that we didn't see coming sooner. Without hope, what's the point of doing what I'm doing? So what gives me hope is the students I get to work with, um, particularly because I get to work with students from this huge variety of perspectives and experiences who aren't always so well represented in the history of science. Um, and the things they bring to the field, are they're different and they're innovative and they're valuable. And I feel like there is promise if we have more of those voices in the conversation to get somewhere new. It's going to take some time for leadership, for people who are able to drive rapid change, to, um, to really adopt those new perspectives, to sort of reflect the new diversity in the field. So I'm just concerned about the pace of change in our fields. And um, really hopeful, though, that we're going to do some nonlinear jumps that, you know, we're going to have some transformative moments that get us more quickly to where we need to be to solve these problems. I mean, a lot of the work that my lab does is in partnership with um, private landowners, with nonprofit organizations in the county, um, with state agencies who sort of work in a lot of different geographies. It's all very place-based. And I think the, um, the place that that work starts is that shared connection that we have to people in the community, to these places. And that's especially true for our indigenous partners because they have the longest connections by far and have been left out of the conversation about how to steward them for a really long time.
the ways that you interact with other people in the field are totally different from what they look like in the office. And being in the field to me is, um, it's my favorite place to be. It's about, you know, just noticing. It's about sort of learning and asking questions with all five senses. I have four kids. I mean, I've been in the field with my kids a lot over the last 20 years. And uh, it can be really, really hard, but for them, it's been amazing. I mean, they know so much and they feel so connected to the places that I do field work. Um, it, I, it's been an interesting juggle to be a scientist and also to be a mom and to have a big family, but um, it's been totally worth it.